So it's a meditation on satisfaction. To be satisfied, we need to be free of anger, hatred and loathing. We also need to be free of lust and desire. We also need to be free of our habits, our rituals. Only when we can be without fear, open in our hearts, then we can meet the world and be satisfied by it. Take a comfortable position. Feel how the earth is supporting your body. In the beginning there might still be tension. That's okay. Your breathing might be tense. Your muscles might be tense, your posture might be tense. We're coming from a waking world in which we have to struggle, which we have to survive. But now let go of this tension. And give it to the earth. Feel how the earth is supporting your body, nourishing your body. Surrender to the earth and let go of your attention. Focus now on your feet and calves. Often there can be a lot of resistance there, a lot of held back emotions. Surrender these tensions to the earth. Allow your excess emotions to flow into the earth, back to where they came from. Feel how the earth is stimulating your knees, your lower legs and your pelvis, awakening your power and your spirit, inviting your spirit to explore the world, to live on the earth. Feel that you are welcome here. Focus on your breathing. All your body should breathe. Not only your belly, not only your chest. All of it. Let that 
every exhalation you also relax. Every out breath, the tension flows out of you. This slow, deep breathing so allows the energy to go out of your head, your neck and your shoulders, so they too can relax. all the heaviness which is still in your torso and in your head flow into the earth all your struggles all your traumas give them back to the earth if your spirit is free Slowly but surely, you will start to feel lighter, more clean, more pure. And as this is happening, so your spirit will feel more free in the here and the now. When you have this light and free feeling, you can start to visualize. Close your eyes. And feel how your spirit existing on the astral level, a level free from the lower vibrations of the earth. That on this astral level there is a temple, a place where your spirit goes. between lives, where it can connect to all other powers and spirits. This temple is the heart of your spirit. Try to go there, go to your temple. possible that also at your temple you will meet some of the people you've known in this life, you've known in previous lives, maybe also your spirit guides. friends behind should go deeper into the temple, the place where all your lives come together. Where there's a wealth of information, wisdom. great amount of power amassed over many lifetimes, some in human form, some in other form. Look at this heart of your temple. 
and to realize that everything is impermanent. Things come and go. You get them, you lose them. What remains on a higher level is the satisfaction of the spirit. like when a meal is done, the food is no longer on your plate, but there is satisfaction at having had a great meal. Similarly, in the spirit can be satisfied with its incarnation, with its adventure. And feel this deep, non-judgmental appreciation for your own life for your own existence. and satisfaction which can be very hard to find in this life. Feel that it exists. It is not impossible for you. That you've actually had it many times before. It's just that you've forgotten because it was before this life. Here in the temple of your spirit, there is no before or after. The satisfaction exists. It is a mold into which your energy body can flow. Allow the energy in your body to adjust to this pattern, this pattern of satisfaction, of appreciation and contentment, of not being passive, but also not being motivated by fear or need. Rather be motivated by your heart, by compassion, by interest. But allow this pattern living out of the compassion of your spirit, the curiosity of your spirit. Allow that to flow into your physical body. To allow the flow of energy from the earth to adjust, to support this pattern. To help you be satisfied, at peace, at content. Feel how warm the earth can be, full of feelings of friendship and brotherhood, bountiful, new experiences behind every corner.
Now slowly but surely make your way back to your normal waking consciousness but without stressing again without becoming fearful again if you notice tension is rising stop take another step back until you relax only when you're completely relaxed and at peace. Take another step forward to your waking consciousness. And so slowly but surely. Bring this peace of your spirit as a pattern to your waking consciousness, into your daily life. When you feel that there is no longer anything disturbing you, you can remain at peace while still being conscious of where you are in the here and the now. Slowly start moving your body a bit. Just move your toes, your fingers, your feet. Slowly start stimulating the flow of the chi in your body. And here also, if you notice that it is upsetting you or stressing you, stop doing that. Go back. Until you feel at peace again. Until your tensions flow away. And then try it once more. It takes time to let go of these patterns. But the more often you do this, the more easy it will become. I'd like to talk a little bit about um, astral travel and the do's and don'ts. Um, so ultimately astral travel is just one of the ways to uh, yeah, access knowledge to find out how things really are. Um, we can of course watch the news, read a book, um, talk to other people and they will of course just give you their view um, but astral travel has several advantages. Um, the biggest advantage is you can see things a lot more from a source perspective. Um, in general, higher powers are, uh, you could say, creating the mold into which other energies uh, move into. So things exist on an astral level before they exist on a physical level. So this is also how um, clairvoyance uh, in the form of seeing the future works or dreaming the future works. Um, while we are sleeping, our um, energy body and our consciousness goes into the astral and there the things which are about to happen have, are already in existence. And this can be sometimes years from when it will manifest. Um, but in general, um, the, like the closer it is, the more um, firm, the more solid the astral form will be. And but it's also important to realize if we see an astral future, that doesn't mean that that will also happen, because there are many astral futures, many possible futures. But in the astral we can not just see this possible future but also what powers have created this possible future. So for instance if we um, yeah, look at um, uh, a relatively big event like the planes flying into the uh, World Trade Center in New York or uh, more recently the uh, plane crash in uh, eastern Ukraine of uh, 
Malaysian Airlines. Um, these events, they tend to be, you could say, almost planned astrally. They exist on an astral level, they're already created on an astral level, then they're just manifesting on a physical level. And if, uh, for instance, during such an event you astrally travel, you can in a way see that yeah, there's kind of a scenario which is just being played out on a physical level and if there's enough power in it then uh, there's a lot of control over it so any event can have an astral source like um, if I find a coin in the street it can have an astral <laughs> source of it but uh, it tends to be that most astral energies they're created by our thoughts and emotions and as you know it's very hard to focus your thoughts or to control your emotions so they tend to switch every few minutes or so and so all the time we are creating different futures and um, yeah ultimately the things which are not strong enough you could say only one thing can happen in the physical world at one place and one time and the things options which are not strong enough, they get pushed aside by the stronger patterns. So it's a kind of a form of selection um, where the strongest and the most powerful patterns tend to manifest. So this is usually a very good thing because the patterns which are strongest are generally our karmatic patterns. So if we, if something should happen in our lives uh, then it tends to happen in our lives and if it doesn't happen immediately well the pattern just stays until another opportunity for it to happen comes along um, so for instance if I want to win the lottery I'll have to first buy a lottery ticket and even though there might be a very strong astral pattern as long as I don't buy the ticket it won't happen it cannot manifest so there's always a certain time and place or an opportunity which the earth gives for an astral pattern to manifest and this is where astrology comes in because depending on the astrological influences our energy body um, will also be charged with the energies of those planets and those energies of those planets and stars they will attract uh, a certain similar energy uh, so, for instance, if there is a certain constellation which is very good for romance, I will tend to, um, those patterns in me will tend to be amplified by the astrological conditions. And so the likelihood of it happening is a lot bigger than at other times. So you could say that the astral pattern, together with uh, astrological circumstances, will create also physical circumstances and these three powers together create an event so the earth has to be ready to respond um, there has to be a pattern and the pattern has to be supported and amplified by elemental uh, energies or planetary energies if we're talking about certain uh, yeah, big events you can create an astral pattern for an event and uh, there are many beneficial ways of doing this for instance um, a faith healing uh, positive thinking um, for instance in case of cancer it is well known that the placebo effect is can be immensely strong it can literally turn a person's life around throw cancer into remission and yeah, become a medical miracle because people put a lot of energy in it they put all their energy in it they really believe in they will be strong again they will be healthy again they will be there for their families so these astral patterns can be very powerful and if the body is receptive to it and also the energetical conditions are right then yeah miracles can happen so if we go into the astral to find or to create these patterns um, the trickiest thing is to get into the right level of the astral so the lower levels of the astral world they are the you could say almost the, the pers your personal astral
corner. Um, it's not a collective space, it's a very individualized space. This is the place where you usually have your dreams, where you have your hopes, where you have your fantasies, where you have your thoughts, your feelings. And um, you create all these things and um, yeah, some of them will manifest, but most of them won't because there's simply too much variation going on. But also the things you see in this place, they're basically your own fears, your own hopes, your own dreams. And they're not part of a collective reality. Um, and because they're only powered by you and nothing else, they tend not to be very good at manifesting themselves. If you go a little bit higher in the astral, you get more in a collective space, in a space where um, other spirits can work with you or build something together with you. And if here you start dreaming or uh, visualizing, then other powers can join in with your visualization, strengthen it, and because this image then becomes a lot more powerful, a lot more strong, it also has a lot more connections to the rest of the world and to other energies, because it's, the image is not only connected through you and through your connections, but through all the other participants as well. So if you create something in a very collective sense, then the chance of it yeah, manifesting itself is much, much bigger. And this is also the purpose of working with, uh, uh, with groups or group energies or uh, rituals. If you work with a group, you use the power of yeah, everybody and you combine it into one image. If you work with a ritual, um, you can work with groups as well, but uh, more importantly, you also work over time. Um, so in a ritual you can build up energies, you can charge the ritual space or the ritual object over many days or even months, years. Uh, so it builds layer upon layer of energy until it becomes very, very strong and very likely to manifest. So if you hold on to an image and you keep on nourishing it, feeding it, reinforcing it, uh, then the chance of it ultimately manifesting is becomes bigger and bigger. But you have to be patient about these things, because often, even though an image might exist and be strong enough to manifest, it can take months, years, and sometimes it will even require a next incarnation. Because I might have certain dreams or aspirations which don't to get, go together with my current body. I cannot simply grow fur and a tail and nice ears which can move around to show my mood. Then I'll have to incarnate in the form of a cat or a dog, for instance. So even though I can have a very strong desire, a very strong image, and this energy can be very strong, um, the condition for it to manifest might be that yeah, my spirit has to find a new body. So it is hard to really predict when something will happen, if you're looking astrally. You can only say that something will happen and uh, possibly also why something will happen. You can look at the sources. And by looking at the source of the energy, you can also see which powers are um, making it happen. It is a little bit similar to um, an energetical fingerprint. The problem is that even though you might discover an image, uh, it is not always so easily tracked back to its owner. Um, because the owner might leave a very strong fingerprint or almost none, or you might not be able to follow the trail. Um, so the easiest case is you um, find a pattern and you find also the person who is actually at that very moment building the pattern and thinking about it, dreaming about it, fantasizing it and building up the, these energies. Um, so this is a very uh, simple case. If the person starts using tools, such as for instance uh, symbols or magical language or working together with a certain planetary power or a certain egregore, can often find traces of those tools. 
so you can determine how such a magical pattern was created and uh, exactly how that, uh, that works. Most often you will find that if you look at these astral patterns is that it is usually based on emotion. A uh, person will be jealous or envious of somebody or will be very afraid of something or be very hopeful of something or will um, yeah, think good thoughts uh, about something or imagine or fantasize about it. So these are the, the usual sources and depending on the person's yeah, power uh, and also the, the harmony and cooperation they have with their spirit such an image is likely or more likely or less likely to manifest. But here you also have a, a difference you could say in, uh, in dreamers and stalkers. Uh, so dreamers are very good at creating the astral images but the astral images they create they cannot really manifest them themselves so their energy tends to flow very easily into the astral they can often also easily see into the astral create things in the astral but to get things to manifest uh, is hard because the energy tends to flow upward and not down so the energy cannot flow through them they cannot create it or make it happen in their own life they can just see why things are happening in other people's lives and they can create an image which then possibly the other person can pick up so it will happen in their life but they cannot help themselves very easily so the opposite pattern is the pattern of a stalker a stalker can just grab energies and manifest them so they don't have the same um, insight in general as to the hows and whys of things uh, but they're more, you could say, uh, instead of a theoretical person, more of a technician. They get things to work. Um, and if they have a goal, they can usually find patterns which they can use for that goal or energies they can use for that goal. So they tend to really accelerate things around them very, very rapidly. So if a pattern exists, and that pattern would normally just wait for the best opportunity to manifest because it doesn't have the strength or power to manifest very easily and it might be years until such a thing will, would happen but if there is um, a stalker who has a similar desire and thinks like well I want something like that to happen he will actually grab hold of, the, of this energetic pattern and join it with the flow of energy, the flow of powers which are going through him, moving into the world of manifestation. And then, ta-da, it will happen in months and except in, instead of in years. So, it is quite difficult to make a good prediction if you uh, go into this uh, astral perception. 